Xavier, how that decision was made, and if you have a replacement yet in the starting lineup, if that decision has been made as well. Well, I haven't gotten that far as far as if I have a replacement in the starting lineup. Um, we haven't had practice yet, so um, I've been working on the game plan for Nebraska. And had other things on my mind, but overall, uh, unfortunately for uh, X, um, you know, as you heard, you know, there is a suspension for one, and you know, we have to further look at this thing deeper and deeper and see uh, what's, what we're going to do moving forward. So there could be anything else, like additional, or is it just sure. this one game? Okay. Not sure. Zach, what was Xavier's reaction to the suspension? I was disappointed. Uh, it was disappointed for many reasons, uh, but uh, overall, um, he, he knows that the team is going to miss him. He knows he let his teammates down. Uh, so, James, and do you want to guess what team policy did Xavier violate? Well, that's uh, in house. So we have uh, team rules, and unfortunately, uh, he broke one of them. So we have the yeah, repercussions. Consequences that you have to pay when you break team rules. I guess how surprising is it for you that of all the people you feel like you have to hold accountable or discipline, it's you know multi-year staff member on the, on the team. Uh, anyone, one through sixteen, uh, I will hold it accountable. If you break a team rule, you break a team rule, no matter who you are. No one is bigger or better than the team. Brian, do you share a timeline of, of when the violation happened and when you decided to? No, I don't know the timeline. Assuming Dave Julius plays a big role, what is your expectation for him tomorrow night? Well, uh, Dave is a huge part of his team. Uh, he's been a rotation guy, so uh, Dave, is, as well as his other teammates, will have to step up to fill the, uh, the void. Would you say the season is at a crossroads right now with the four-game losing streak and now Xavier suspended? Just what's your definition of crossroads? I mean, it could go any number of ways. You know, you guys have been in the midst of a losing streak the longest in five years. So. Captain just got suspended. I'm just curious what your thoughts are on the team's trajectory right now. Uh, every team goes through adversity. Um, no team, uh, well, it's been, it's been hard to see a team that goes undefeated. Um, so I, I don't expect that, or I did not expect our team was going to go undefeated. Um, through process like this, uh, it defines character and it builds character. So uh, I love how our, our team has been responding and uh, we have a lot more season to be played. Ed? Coach, do you have any thoughts or memories you could share on the Kobe Bryant tragedy? Well, I, I, it's uh, it's tough. It, it really is. It's tough for the basketball world, the basketball community. But uh, it, it's very challenging for uh, the Bryant family and the other families that were lost during this tragic uh, uh, situation. Um, when you talk about Kobe Bryant, uh, he's in the, in the basketball community, especially NBA, you know, NBA is a family. Uh, when you come through that, that you know, world, um, Kobe become one of your brothers. And so he's like a brother to me and many others. So uh, it's a big loss to our family. And you know, my wife was very emotional. Uh, it's been an emotional time for my family because he was a hero and an icon to us all. Um, my kids looked up to him. Uh, one of my boys, that was his favorite player growing up, and still is. Uh, Kobe was one of my favorite players growing up, and I was older than Kobe, but uh, I respected uh, what Kobe and how he approached the game of basketball. Uh, his work ethic was like no other. Uh, he, was, he reminds me of number 23, Michael Jordan, in so many ways. I haven't had the chance myself personally to get to know Michael and be, become friends with Michael. I saw a lot of Kobe and Michael, um, as we all know, he's a five-time NBA champion, which is very hard to do. Um, 20 years in the NBA, um, it goes to show you about his, his level of toughness when a guy tears Achilles, goes up to the free throw line, make the free throws, and then walk off, walk off the court himself. Uh, it, it shows you how he's wired. I'm not going to allow a stretcher or I'm not going to let anyone carry me off. I'm going to walk off on my own. You know, that's mental toughness. And when 
when you hear the word toughness, you know, obviously Kobe name has to come to mind. And so when you hear a situation like this, that what happened with Kobe and Gigi and the others, you know, I have my father, and, you know, I can just only imagine, wouldn't know what his family is going through. And, and no one wants to experience anything like that. So it, it's been uh, a very difficult time for all of us because Kobe meant a lot to this, not only just the basketball world, but to, he was inspiring to many folks. And, you know, a guy with an Oscar, like think about that. Like he's, he has winning, like built it within his DNA. He's wired different. Um, you got five time champion, 18 time all-star, all ABA first team for probably 11 years, um, two time finals MVP, and you win an Oscar. Then you also was a part of Body Armor, and Body Armor blew up like no other in the market. He's a, a part owner in that. And to write stories and books and to inspire kids. And then you're a head coach of your, your daughter's basketball team. And, and she had a lot of Kobe DNA in her too. Like I watched film, I watched, watched it on social media. I'm like, damn, she's 13 years old and she's doing that. And I knew that like coach uh, Gino from UConn, Kobe, and, Gino had a really good relationship, and Kobe also had a great relationship with Nike, with his own NBA line, our own uh, Nike line. And I knew Oregon was very interested in his daughter, but I was also gonna put in my little bid and say, hey, you know, you might wanna consider Coach Kim at the University of Michigan. You know, Michigan has a great, you know, it's a great school, great academics, you know. I was gonna put my bid in. And because uh, she was an exceptional basketball player for her age, and she wanted to be great like her dad. And, you know, this is a tough one, fellas. It's tough. Is there anything specific you can recall during your career that maybe, maybe early in his career when you thought, wow, this guy's different, or just something that maybe is a signature Kobe Bryant? <laughs> oh, well, I think I just started coaching, and we we're in Staples Center. And, like the Staples Center, you cross the, the the home team's locker room to get to the visiting team locker room. And I saw Kobe, we were crossing paths, and I said, yo, how long you gonna end up playing for? He says to me, until I win two more championships. And I'm like, okay, well, this is probably, what, his 17th year? And the guy didn't say, okay, well, I wanna play until, until my 20th year. He said, until I win 20 more championships, that's how he was wired. Like, he was had a quest to break MJ's like NBA Finals like championship record, like six. He Kobe was going for seven, and he could have done it. Like, that's how he, that's how good he was. He's a great boss, basketball player, but great father, great man. Uh, you want to update on Isaiah and whether he'll play tomorrow? Day to day. That's all I can tell. Day to day. He's getting better. And just what's the overall <coughs> mood around the team right now, kind of with, with Isaiah, with Xavier, with, with the losses, kind of like Ryan was describing? Well, uh, we're not drowning in our own tears or, or drowning in the lake. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Mood of our team is we're solution based. We're going to roll up our sleeves, figure out how we can get better as a group. And the guys are in the gym working hard. And uh, they had a great practice yesterday. And we expect to have another good practice today to prep for Nebraska. I, I imagine your whole team looked up to Kobe quite a bit. I guess what have the last 24 hours been like for you as a coach and, and mentor to the team? Well, I just told you how I felt. Oh, I know. I, didn't think, know. I, didn't like, like, I haven't had a chance to see the team. They've oh. been in school right now. Oh. Yeah, they've been in class. So we have practice later. Do you, ex I mean, I guess what's your mindset if they are grieving or if they are kind of shaken up by it? We will, we will talk. We will address that. Does anybody have anything else? Juan, is, is Isaiah's injury, uh, it looks similar to a lot of people. And
from the first one? Do you know if it is the, the same type of thing? Or? Well, it's a day-to-day -day, uh, injury, so we just pray that he gets healthy soon. James? Uh, my question is, has COVID affected your ability to play in have inspired my coaching techniques. Kobe has inspired us in many ways. You know, I just, I haven't even had a chance to even think about all that. You know, it's been a short amount of time since Kobe has left us. And so, I'm, my heart just goes out to Vanessa and the, and the kids right now. That's what I'm concerned with. And also the other families that have lost loved ones. And just to be clear on Xavier's situation, appreciating in-house, after the Nebraska game, It'll be reevaluated and it could extend? Or yes, after the Nebraska game, we will reevaluate it and see. Uh, but as of right now, he, he will not be with us tomorrow. Coach, I think that's going to do.